So in the past, I've made multiple videos talking about how to raise chickens. In fact, that's basically the gist of my channel. But you know what? I figured I'd show you how to raise healthy chickens since never a main topic. And also, 87% of people that watch these videos aren't subscribed. Click it now. When you raise your chickens, you should expect to put in effort. But what is one thing they need to stay alive? They need feed and water. Well, how much do you need to give them each day at a bare minimum? I want you to keep these numbers in mind. Every chicken, so you see this bowl right here, this bowl right here that the chickens are eating out of about, that serves about one dozen chickens. So you have it filled to the, at least like near the top. You should expect to use about three of those per day. So that's maybe around, around three quarters of a gallon of feed per day. So around maybe seven or eight pounds of feed per day around this time of year. And as for water, they're going to need a lot of that too. This water, I believe, is around one gallon of water. And they went through all three of them today, so... But the day's almost over, so it doesn't really matter at this point. <laughs> that means they usually... That means that one dozen chickens usually goes through about three to six gallons of water per day. Depends on the heat. Uh, depends on the temperature. If it's a lot cooler, they'll go through a lot less. So you need to keep that in mind to raise healthy chickens, because they need tons of feed and water. Which also means more work on you, so... Yeah, be prepared to be feeding your chickens and watering them. Because if you expect to get off of that like that, then what are you doing on this video? Because, like, there's no way you can raise your chickens like that. Alright, so you wouldn't believe it, but in here there are chickens. There's just no light in here. We have a total of five in there. But if there's one thing I can tell you about those chickens, that is the fact that those chickens, they were used using a sing- they, We raised them using one single method to keep them alive. And that method is giving them what they need. Sounds very stupid, but that's the method that I use. You need to give them what they need, and you need to exclude what they don't need. Now what they don't need, I want you to take that with a pinch of salt. This method is a little bit more on the complex side because it has several different sides to it. But what they need and what they don't need will end up combining later. So what they need is what they need from day one. And what they don't need is what they don't need from day one, but will eventually need. So treats, you know, they might need those later, but they don't eventually need it from day one. And then you have the optional side, where you could put, like, other stuff. And then, of course, they don't ever give this to your chickens. So there are four sides to this method, and that's the method I use. So you need to slowly start adding what you think they don't need into that, into the what they need as their life progresses. Usually everything that they don't need is in the uni- is in the maybe they need this after about maybe 7 to 12 months. So be patient. Now there's just one quick thing I want to talk about. So when you're moving your chickens outside, there's a certain temperature that they need to go down by. This will definitely help you raise the heat lamp in their, in their brooder when they're young. And this will also help them- this will also help you determine when they should go outside. So the starting temperature in their brooder is 90 degrees. Seems really hot, but when you actually go outside in the summer, you realize that's like ridiculously cold for like people in the south. And then when you have, <clears throat> and then once you get that, the first week goes by, then you can drop the brooder temperature to 85 degrees. And then second week goes by, 80 degrees. So you drop their temperature by five degrees every single week. So once the temperature meets the average outside temperature, so, when you look at like a 7 or 10 day long forecast, take the numbers, add them up, divide it by 7 or 10, and you find your average temperature for each day. And you can use that to determine when you want to put them outside. That's how we determine how to put them outside, basically. Now, most of the videos I make are three tips, so I'm just going to give you a bonus tip because I'm feeling extra special today. So yeah, let's talk about this real quick. So, you need to always be looking out ahead. Now, I've already tried to film this clip like 30 times, but I get extremely like mad whenever I do this for some reason, but yeah, always look out ahead. So, so when you are about to move your chickens, so let's just say they're over there, their portable chicken coop is right there, and you want to move it to say right here. The first thing you need to do when they're right here is you need to point out the general area with four points. And then you might want to go to like Walmart or something, get like four trail cameras, they're about 20 to $30 each. And then you plant them in each location. And by the way, when I said portable chicken coop, that actually means you can move it around. So yeah, if you want to learn how to do that, video's linked in description, or you can just go to my channel to check it out. So that way that'll keep the viewer session going. But yeah, wow, I am so short of breath right now, but I don't care, so I'm just gonna keep talking. But you know, you want to get a trail camera, at least one of them in the area, you want to check on the local wildlife. So let's just say there is a lot of 
coyotes in the area. So let's just say the area you're planting is about half an acre. And let's just say there's a whole pack of coyotes that regularly go there for more than three hours of your of the day. And, that'll, and the chickens will be interfering during that three hours of the day that they go by. Well, that's, well, I'm not sure if you're going to have a chicken flock by the time you move them out of there. So you need to be on high alert of what type of wildlife is there. And well, if you're about to move them outside and you don't plan on building a portable chicken coop, you can do that too because, well, that'll definitely help out a lot.